My name is Ilya Baron, and uh, I'm the VP of Architecture at Onshape. And uh, first of all, I want to second Jordan's welcome. I'm really excited to see the, um, the great presentations and posters today. So let me start by telling you a little about what Onshape's collaboration with the research community means for me. My introduction to CAD began with an internship at SolidWorks the summer before I started college. And then I came back next summer and seven more summers after that. All the while I was doing my undergrad and then my PhD in computer graphics and geometric modeling. And the relationship between those internships and my education and research was really symbiotic even though the goal of the internships was basically creating prototypes rather than publishing. But every now and then, I would stumble on a problem at SolidWorks that I didn't know how to solve. And uh, then looking at the literature, I discovered that no one else knew how to solve it either. And that provided the inspiration to work on it as a research problem back at MIT. And uh, some of my best research directions got started this way. The moral of the story for students and their advisors is go do industry internships where they'll give you challenging problems. You'll come face to face with research questions you might not find otherwise. I continued wor uh, my work at Disney Research in Zurich, and I was doing reasonably well as a graphics researcher, and I was planning to make a career out of it. Um, but then the best people that I met at SolidWorks that very first summer in 1999 offered me a chance to help design a new CAD system from scratch. And I could not say no to the potential impact. I mean, almost every design begins in a new CAD system, in a CAD system. So what could be better than building a better CAD system? And one of the things that I brought to the table is an understanding of both the academic side and the industry side and how they can benefit each other. Uh, for example, I was involved in making sure our terms of service are friendly to researchers. Now, as friendly as we are to researchers, we're obviously building on shape primarily for engineers to make it easier to design bikes, medical devices, cars, robots, airplanes, and everything else. As a result, we have a full set of features, a production strength kernel, and real companies creating production data. And this makes Onshape better suited for researchers than a pure research platform that wouldn't have all of that. So sure, for some theoretical research, you might want a simple sandbox away from real world complexity, but CAD research tends to be on the applied side by its nature. And sharing a platform with real engineers is a big benefit. And something that's almost too intangible to put on a slide is the Onshape culture. During my PhD, I noticed a deep disconnect between the CAD industry and academic research. As Jordan mentioned, funding was drying out. And also, I think it was caused by domain expertise being locked in at old CAD companies that wanted to treat everything as a trade secret. Onshape is different. We regularly have under the hood blog posts and presentations where we share all sorts of technical details about how Onshape is implemented with the philosophy that keeping our community informed and engaged is more important than keeping competitors in the dark. And while we don't have a formal research group, I hope we will in the future, we talk and work with researchers and we want to share knowledge. On the more tangible side, with Onshape, you get two things. You get a platform that you can test with and build upon using tools like FeatureScript and our API. And this can be used for prototyping new algorithms, for modeling or sketching or assembling, for exploring what users do and even how they think and how they approach design problems. And you get our public data, which you can use as test cases, illustrations or for inspiration. And as much of today's research is about deep learning, which lives or dies by training data, Onshape's public data can come to the rescue. 
from the beginning, we treated researchers as an important use case for our public data, and that's reflected in our design in several ways. First of all, our free plan requires that all models you create be public. And while part of the goal is, of course, to force professionals into a paid plan, the flip side is to get free users to generate data. And we use this data for debugging, and you can use it for research. And the reason you can use it for research is in our terms of service. All free users have agreed that their public data is available under terms equivalent to the MIT license. And so Onshape itself is a huge repository of free designs, obviously of varying quality, but there are many good parametric models in there. And you can access them in Onshape directly or export them as a mesh or a BREP, either manually or via our API. Several research groups have done the work of extracting some of the on-shape public data and packaging it into a more digestible form for batch processing. For instance, the ABC dataset project led from NYU extracted and packaged up a million on-shape parts. Of course, the models don't have all the information that's contained in on-shape, but they have a lot. And I don't think such a large data set of CAD models has been previously made publicly available. And they didn't just publish a data set. Uh, they used it to demonstrate a, a new interesting thing that with enough real world data, a number of fancy complicated mesh vertex normal estimation algorithms actually perform worse than just averaging the face normals. The Sketchgraphs project from Princeton and Columbia packaged up 50 million sketches, including their construction order. Again, CAD data was never previously available at such a scale. And in the paper, one of the things they use the data for is to train a machine learning model to automatically constrain sketches. Uh, and then the Automate project from the University of Washington and in which I was involved released over 500,000 unique mates and their associated parts, all created by Onshape users. The goal of the project is automatically predicting mates between parts. So there's a lot of data already available, and extracting huge amounts of data from Onshape takes time and effort. So before starting that, see if what you're looking for already exists. And if it turns out you do need to extract a bunch of data from Onshape, Talk to us first and don't flood the requests. Our ops team's job is to protect the service. So if you send too many requests or look like a denial of service attack, they will shut you off. But if you have a legitimate need and are willing to work with us, we'll work with you. An important tool in using Onshape for research is our REST API. It's powerful, though not all areas are equally well supported but it does allow you to look at a part studio or an assembly, modify it, ask for mass properties or measurements, uh, regenerate parts in different configurations, see how the feature list fits together or what the sequence of edits that the user made to a given document was. Uh, it lets you export data or you can go out and create a custom application if for example, you want to interface with another system or enlist the help of our users to test your work. And the other way you can program and customize Onshape is unique to us. It's called FeatureScript, a programming language we created. And it lets you put logic right inside part regeneration in the form of smart custom features. And to ensure it's sufficiently powerful, we made the decision to use it for all our own features, eating our own dog food, so to speak. And the source code is available as a public document. Uh, in effect, it provides a simplified and idealized modeling kernel that lets you work conveniently with a BREP. And it lets you prototype algorithms. Although if you do need to do heavy computation, the overhead of FeatureScript 
uh, may get in the way and then you're better off getting an EDU license of Parasolid and linking to Onshape via our API. But even cooler, both commercial users and researchers can use FeatureScript to effectively build a custom CAD system within Onshape, um, uh, tailored for you know, whatever special needs you might have. And actually, Chad Stolfus will talk about that later today. Now, the differentiators that make Onshape attractive to engineers also help researchers, like not being tied to a workstation with all your code and data because feature script as well as your models all live in Onshape documents in the cloud. And uh, for example, you can work with multiple users on custom features at once. And feature script testing is reproducible since all of the document history is always saved. So if you're prototyping an algorithm and a custom feature, you can always go back to a previous state. So remember when I said that Onshape's primary market is engineers? That means we're not trying to extract money from researchers and students. So as an EDU plan user, you can access the full power of the paid Onshape standard plan for free. So keep your grant money to hire students. Now, everything that I have talked about has been available for a couple of years now, and we're starting to see the results of research groups taking advantage of it. The ABC dataset was released in 2019, and the paper already has almost 200 citations, which is great. Now, not all of the citing papers make use of the data, of course, but the data has been used to, uh, for example, design new algorithms for fitting to point clouds or for detecting edges in the point clouds, to vectorize drawings, and to explore generally how deep learning can work with uh, these types of 3D shapes. Another paper I'd like to highlight is from Google's DeepMind team which uses on-shape data to train a machine learning model, like is frequently done for natural language processing. Except here, instead of natural language, the language is sketches. And they're able to use that model to generate new fully constrained sketches, for example, uh, based off of a bitmap image. And then the DeepCAD project from Columbia trained a generative network on full 3D parametric models. And they show that it can generate designs that look like something that a human might make, albeit a beginner. These projects are not yet ready to put engineers out of a job, but they're very impressive nonetheless. Later today, we'll hear from Professor Adriana Schultz, who's done a ton of awesome work with Onshape. Um, everything from exploring configuration spaces of parametric models to the automate project I previously mentioned for automatically predicting mates. And I'm not going to spoil her presentation by saying any more. Now, as a computer scientist, I often make the mistake of thinking of CAD research as primarily designing algorithms or interactive systems. But the reality is much broader than that. And Professor Alison Olachowski has used Onshape to study the very nature of how engineers work and collaborate. And I'm really looking forward to hearing her insights in the panel discussion this morning. Some of these projects and many others will be at the poster session today. So definitely don't miss that. When I was starting out in the CAD industry, one of the things I felt could be greatly improved is the collaboration between research and industry. And today is particularly important to me because it represents a closer and healthier relationship where the companies are more open and the researchers do more relevant work. So enjoy the show today and get inspired for more great research. Let's figure out better ways to design. Thank you. And back to Matt. Thank you so much, Ilya. Um, yeah, so so incredible to uh, first hear Jordan's perspective on CAD from the beginnings to Onshape, and hear your perspective from the beginning of Onshape through now and where 
where it can go in the future. Um, so we got one question in the chat and I'd encourage everyone else to put any additional questions in the chat uh, from Professor Olachowski who asks, are you personally working on any research projects now that you're excited to share? That you um, can share, I suppose. So currently I am, I am not actively uh, working on uh, research projects, but I have, uh, so as I mentioned, I worked on the Automate project, which was uh, great to, um, to, you know, still have a toe in the research world. Uh, there are also some algorithms that we designed that are within Onshape that um, I would actually like to publish, uh, but that that is currently on hold, but I'm, you know, I'm hopeful that I'll be able to do it fairly soon. Great. Um, so I, I actually have one question. Um, I thought it was it was really interesting how you touched on your background as a, a graphics researcher. You typically think of CAD as uh, you know ones and zeros, but think it's important how there are researchers also using user analytics and and thinking about the human perspective. And I think that's so well represented in the way that feature script is presented with feature studios. You have just a little sandbox where you can add code snippets and um, you know have have a, a great user interface for developing your custom features. Um, so I'd, I'd be interested in your perspective on how you think about the user side of CAD um, and the human side of CAD as you're developing new algorithms and and trying to push the geometry to to the new limits. So um, one of the uh, one of the really nice things about feature script uh, from from this perspective is how quick the turnaround is. When you're doing research, you're it's a lot of trial and error. You're prototyping, you're trying things out. And just being able to immediately see the results of your code changes and immediately test what you're doing. Uh, is something that's extremely valuable. And uh, because there's there's no compilation, it's uh, all automatically linked. As soon as you make a change to a custom feature, you immediately see the results. So that that's an example of um, how I think that uh, feature script can positively impact uh, developer or researcher productivity um, in that regard. And also, of course, that makes it easier to learn and uh, and more fun to use, more more pleasant. The, one of the things we think about a lot is, you know, is the user enjoying themselves while uh, while working on Onshape? And so uh, that's uh, that, that's not something you can express in an algorithm, but that's hugely important to us as we're designing. It. Great. Um, 